goes, and uh, stove is on. It's a little bit of a flashback, but it worked out. It's hard to see the hydrogen flame. Oops. And it went out for some reason. Well, that was quick. Okay, it's July 7th at 8.20 in the evening here in Germany, and we're going to try to see how much cooking we can do from a little bit of hydrogen. The limitation is going to be the storage space in here. It's only a few liters of storage, and so we'll have to change and later on use this 100 liter thing that we were storing biogas in, uh, which should give us more time. But for right now, just because of the way it's set up, we're just going to check out the stove with the hydrogen. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this pill bottle, and it was a folic acid pill bottle, and we're going to put some aluminum in it. We did previous experiments in larger containers, but as you can see here, um, if you can tell, it created a crack on the bottom because it gets quite hot and caustic, and that didn't work. We'd... Uh, used several different plastic bottles and we found that the pill bottle was the only one that was able to stand the heat and the corrosion so far. Uh, and it doesn't need to be big. So we're going to take these tabs. I get these um, when I go to the uh, on an airplane I ask the stewardesses if they will kindly take these from the beverage containers after the beverage service and they're always delighted to do so. So I'm going to put one, two, three, and 10. I'm going to put 10 of those in there. <clears throat> and then I'm going to take some Drano, Denk mit Rohrreiniger, that's sodium hydroxide solution. And <clears throat> I'm going to pour that in on top. And you should see that it starts to bubble eventually. And that bubbling is the production of hydrogen. At first it's going to get rid of the oxide coating on the aluminum and then it's going to start to more vigorously bubble. At which point this is going to become quite hot. So now it's beginning to foam up. And this goes a lot quicker when you use aluminum foil. Now I've sealed my bottle. Just screwed it on there. And <clears throat> I'm going to put it in a bath of cold water because it does get very hot once it starts. And now we're seeing the hydrogen bubbles begin to be produced from that chemical reaction. The reaction is that sodium hydroxide, water, and aluminum produce sodium aluminate plus hydrogen gas and you're seeing the hydrogen gas bubbling up there from here. And so what we'll do now is we're just going to leave this and let it sit for a while until we've consumed all of the sodium hydroxide. Then we may need to open it and put a little more in because it seems that the sodium hydroxide gets used up first until all the aluminum has dissolved into sodium aluminate. And so you could say that sodium hydroxide is the limiting factor in this reaction. But we don't need to use Drano. We also have used Drano crystals. And you can carry these around and then reconstitute them with water, as you see. So that's one way to do it. Another way to induce the reaction is not to use sodium hydroxide at all, but to use potassium hydroxide which you can get from wood ashes. And when we were in Nepal, we <clears throat> when we were in Nepal, we made our own lye or potassium hydroxide out of wood ash from the cooking stoves, and you can make it out of the ashes of banana peels which are potassium rich or any hardwood. We've tried pine. Pine wood does not work. Soft woods don't have enough potassium, and so while it becomes alkaline, it's not strong enough to release hydrogen from the aluminum. 
but if you use hardwoods, so if you're using as they were doing in Nepal, they use the rhododendron wood that they cook with, or if you're using palm fronds or banana peels or fruit wood. So you don't even have to cut any trees down to do this. You can do trimmings of, uh, of fruit trees and you can use also the pits of fruits, anything that has potassium. And then you can make your, from that ash, you can make a very strong lye solution that's completely renewable and sustainable. And then you can use that to generate the hydrogen. So there's no problem with this kind of hydrogen generation. And we're using either scrap aluminum foil off of dinner plates or we're using the tabs off of aluminum cans. Um, by the way, I'm wearing these goggles because uh, lye and sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide are very caustic and they can blind you. So you want to make sure that you're wearing safety goggles if you do try this. I don't uh, wear gloves anymore. I used to, but I haven't experienced any, any burns from the lye. Um, I do, you do have to wash your hands and you do get that soapy feeling when, uh, when your hands get some of it on it. And you should keep vinegar around to neutralize it in plenty of water. But uh, that seems to be okay. But you've got to protect your eyes when you're doing anything like this. So, <clears throat> so we still have the, uh, the hydrogen. And now it seems to be fairly vigorously bubbling up there. And it's causing water displacement here in this bucket. And yes, this is uh, fairly warm. Started the camera again. It's been 9 minutes and 20 seconds. And... Just continuing the recording. So it does look like there's um, still plenty of aluminum in there that didn't get uh, didn't get used, and so it's the obviously the Drano that was the limitation. So I'll put some more Drano in, and. Uh, now the reaction begins, and we see it starts to accelerate. I put uh, five more tabs in, and a little more Drano, and I put some of these, these crystals in. And what I'm thinking now is it needs maybe to stay a bit hot. Maybe to keep the reaction going fast. So I'm just going to monitor how hot this gets, and only if it gets so hot that it starts melting the plastic again, as it did yesterday, will I put it in the water bath, because I want the hydrogen, as much hydrogen as I can. It's certainly going in a lot faster now. We hear it going blip, 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 blip. And the water level is rising very quickly. The bottle, meanwhile, is really hot to touch, so it may be worth now that it's so hot, it's uh, time to put it in its water bath, cool it off a little bit. That was. Uh, Far too hot. The temperature of the water in here is 24 degrees and the temperature of the bottle is 44.2 right at the top. But it's cooling off now. You can see there's a lot of hydrogen going in now. So letting it get hot may have been a good thing. Now the water has cooled it off and Water that was 24 is now 26 in the bucket, and the bottle's gone down to 29, so 27.6. So it definitely heats up the water. It's a strongly exothermic reaction, and we are definitely putting in so much hydrogen now in the bucket that we're overflowing. So it looks like we've... Um, Got a fairly good reaction going here. And so that probably means that the bucket is full, and so we might as well start our test to see how much hydrogen 
we can cook with here. So once again, the temperature of this now is 20 degrees. There it goes, and the uh, stove is on. It's a little bit of a flashback, but it worked out. Hard to see the hydrogen flame. Oops. And it went out for some reason. Well, that was quick. Now it looks like that used up all the hydrogen just in that short burn because uh, a lot of it probably was lost in the original initial turning on here, and uh, that's where we got our flashback around here. And then it burned because there's all those different holes. When we were doing our test before, and we got over a minute. We were using a single hole, and now we have all these holes. It's just this one hole here. So that just shows you that we'd need more hydrogen than just what's in this little pink bucket to get a substantial burn for this. During the time that it was on, this did go from 20 degrees Twenty-three degrees. Not much.